What's up everybody, welcome back to the Burnout Bob YouTube channel. If it's your first time here, be sure to hit that subscribe button below. Check out all the other previous videos. If you have any questions, I always get back to you. Secondly, I wanted to give a big thanks to the Pacific Northwest Ruck guys. Um, their Instagram is Pacific Northwest Ruckers. They helped out my buddy Dean uh, when he had an issue with his ruckus. And uh, I just want to say thank you. The community is a big community and it was very, very kind of you guys to do. So big, big shout out to y'all. Today's video, we're gonna be working on the front end of the ruckus here. My brake setup has arrived, so the master cylinder I ordered, the special brake line, special banjo fittings, everything has showed up, so I'm gonna show you guys what I'm gonna do for that. I'm gonna mock it up today. I'm not gonna do the full run because I have to order the right size loom for it, so that might take a couple more days, but at least I can get some footage going and show you all where I'm at. Also, I'm gonna be showing you how to lower the any NCY, any Adeline forks. If you order the forks like this and you're happy with how the height is, don't even worry about this. If you wanna lower it like I do, I need to take it down about another inch, I'm gonna show you how to do that on this. It's super easy, all you need is a 17 mil, at least for the Adeline forks, you need a 17 mil, and then something to cut the spring with. So like a, for me, I'm gonna use a cutoff wheel. But first, I need to show you guys this brake setup I'm doing. Um, I've been really excited for this. I've been waiting for this for a while. All right, so this is my HHI master cylinder. This is made for like Harleys and uh, a lot of the bagger bikes use these. I like it because it's super clean. The powder matches the powder on the handlebars, so that's spot on. The master cylinder, what I was looking for is, if you look at all the master cylinders, whether it's the Brembo, the Adelin, NCY, just everything, the master cylinder always sits up. And as you guys know, even with the old round Adelin ones, you can knock it, you can get caught up on it, something can rub it. So I wanted something that was a flush master cylinder that wasn't raised up. And this is what I had found. It is made for one inch bars, so I have a reducer on the inside here and everything is all CNC so it's no plastic no pop metal everything is built aluminum on this so it's not a cheap lever I will say that but it's super clean looking and I'm excited about having this on here so next up is my brake line so this is my brake line that's my banjo fitting there This is the brake line itself, as you can see it's a lot smaller than the throttle cable. And it's a like PVC style brake line. So inside here there's a ferrule and the ferrule gets crushed which crimps to this brake line. So now instead of having your 90 degree banjo fitting here and then a banjo bolt, I have just the banjo bolt and the brake line comes out of it. What I was going for is the less is more look and that's what I was achieving with this. So it literally just looks like the brake line's coming straight out of the fitting. Now this, I'm gonna have to make black because I don't have anything else really silver on the bike. I'm getting the braided line for this. So I can cover this up, the PVC, because I don't like the riding on it. But essentially that's gonna go down like you're seeing, come down to here, and then go straight to the caliper. Now out of the caliper, just like you normally would, I have this straight fitting and it goes right to that little nylon that goes in. That's what the little ferrules look like. I believe they're made of copper and or brass, sorry. And the line will get crushed in it and it's just going to go straight up like that. Now if you noticed, on this master cylinder, there is nothing for brake switches. So you know with the rucks is we all need our brake switches. This way people can see how we're stopping. The brake switch is a pressure switch. And I'm running it off a banjo fitting. So essentially just say there's a caliper right here where my ring finger is. The nylon line is going to go in here. And then 
this is actually the banjo bolt, but it's a pressure switch. So what it does is it goes in there, works as your typical banjo bolt will, and anytime it feels pressure, it triggers the brake switch, which goes right here and will plug into the spots I left open on the harness. So I don't have to have all the extra the wires or anything. And technically it just runs off my banjo bolt. So it's a cleaner look. There's no more wires on the handlebar from that. And I put this, they make this little 90 sheath to help bring it up because otherwise the wires just go straight back. So what I'm going to do is run it up and then run it with this and then run the loom starting from here and just following it up. So it'll look like I have technically only one wire coming up from the master cylinder itself. So that's what I'm having for a brake set up there. I know it's pretty unique. I have not seen it before done on a ruckus, so I searched for a long time. Um, I know for sure nobody has that master cylinder. That master cylinder took about three pockets of my jeans away from me, if you know what I'm saying. It was, it was pretty expensive. But if I'm doing it, I gotta do it right. That's gonna be a super clean front end setup. The next part, like I was saying, I'm gonna show you how to lower the front of your ruckus. All right, so typically, if you're able to take the battery box cover off right here, it's gonna make things 10 times easier for the front cover. Mine, I just slid it off because it's still not on all the way, just because I'm working on the bike. These are 17 mil sockets on the top. So what I like to do is turn this like so, so you have some clearance to pull the spring up. And I've already pre-loosened this a little bit, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish loosening this. And then once I do that, I'll show you the next step. So once you get it off, you can see there's probably about three quarters of an inch of spring that comes up so know that when you get it loose you're gonna have a little bit of resistance and it's gonna push up so just keep some pressure on it and it'll be all set also if you're ever getting leaks from your forks there's where your o-ring is right there on the top of this bolt so all you have to do is remove that o-ring and then you can go ahead and get an o-ring kit from Harbor Freight they sell them there I think it's like $12 and you can put a new o-ring on here now if it's from this seal here, you're in for a different story. <laughs> if you can try to find these on, on eBay, you may be able to. Otherwise, it might be just better off getting new forks. So these do have fork oil in them. So be sure to always keep your fork standing straight up. What you'll do is, and then when you pull this out, you're going to have oil on the spring itself. So keep a microfiber handy. And you can just start pulling up. You can bend it so that it doesn't touch anything. Yeah, there's some oil at the bottom there. So I'm going to get a microfiber, pull this out, and then we'll go ahead and get to cutting. This is what your spring is going to look like. So if you ever need a reference of which end's top or bottom, the tighter weave coils is going to be at the bottom. And then as the coils open up more, that's going to go more towards the top. So what I'm going to do is measure off about an inch and then mark it. And then I'm going to make the cut with my cutoff wheel and then go ahead and place this back into the fork tube and do the exact same with the opposite side. All right, so I marked it right here. I'm going to go ahead and just give a little cut and get this going. Okay, so from where I marked it, four inch, you can see it is exactly one inch off. So I'm gonna let it cool down from where I cut it. I'll put it back in the uh, fork, and then I'll go ahead and do the other side. The reason why I'm not doing both sides at once is because there will be no pressure in the forks, and the front end will just straight drop down. So I'm not gonna do that. Loosen this up, put it back in the fork there, and then we'll button that up. Now that 
that ends on. We're gonna go ahead and loosen up the other end. Okay, so the second spring is out. I've marked it. And now I'm gonna go ahead and make the cut as well on this one. persuasion. So I'm gonna let that cool down for a second. You can see I cut both pieces the same spot. And that's going to drop this down one inch. So once I put this other uh, spring back into the tube, button this up, I'll push down on the handlebars a little bit, let it adjust, and then also it will go down probably a quarter of an inch once it breaks into, maybe a little less than that, like an eighth of an inch, but it will still go down once the springs break in. So I'll go ahead and, it should have cooled off a little bit by now, and I'll put it in the tube, button it up. I really gotta get out to one of those rides that y'all have on the uh, west coast there. Florida needs to step their game up with rides. For a state that has weather that you can ride year round, we really only have like three rides. We have Coco Ride, First Ride, which is never really First Ride, it's always like four months late. And then we have Key West Ride. And that's it. California and Washington get three months of riding <laughs> well, probably probably more Washington than California. But they get like three months of riding. And these guys fit in like nine rides. They got people coming from all over the country. Florida, we need to step our game up. All right, so now the front end has been dropped about one inch. I think to be exact, one inch. So I got the springs out here. If I ever want to go more, once it's all set and the shock arm's in, I can see the placement of the rear. I know for sure I was going to go down an inch. Whether or not I'm going to go down more is all going to be based off of that. And then when I put the side panels on, how low it is. I don't want it to be too low where I can't ride it. But otherwise, not bad. Took an inch off of the uh, front end there. Hope you guys enjoyed the brake setup. Let me know in the comments below. What y'all think of that? And if you made it this far in the video, again, appreciate it. On the next one, I will be looming up the front end and then just going ahead and bleeding it. I'm gonna show you guys some tricks on how to bleed the Adelin front end kit because I know that there's a lot of uh, questions behind that. I'm gonna wrap it up again for today. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I got a lot of good feedback from the spree video, so it made me even more excited for that with the uh, what I'm gonna do with it. So I have some bar stock now for making the motor mount. I have that GY mount you saw in the last video. The next thing I have to figure out is a shock arm, but I'm, I'm super excited for it. I'm gonna teach myself how to weld, or try to at least. Um, this way I don't have to keep using Burt. It may not be pretty, but that's fine. It's all gonna get covered by plastics. As long as it's strong enough to hold, that's all I care about. So I'll be playing around with that, practicing with that. I'm also gonna be practicing with painting because I am going to start painting and then go from there. So again, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that follow button, hit that sub button on the bottom, give it a thumbs up, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.